Good morning, sir, and it's a great privilege to have listened to you. Thank you. This is a question out of curiosity. If those merchants never landed in Surat and if the British never got a chance to uh, colonize India, what, how would India have been today? Will we have this India or would we, would we be saying the same things about the Portuguese or the French? <laughs> or the Dutch. Uh, there was a scramble for overseas territories from European powers um, and, and the, the, the argument uh, that many make is that we were lucky and that if we, were, we were going to get colonized anyway because we're relatively militarily weak and divided and so a European power would have established itself as the Dutch did in Indonesia, the Portuguese did in Mozambique and Goa, uh, the Belgians did in Congo and so on. So if it wasn't the British, it would have been worse. And that's possibly true. But my, if you're going to ask me to go into counterfactual hypotheticals, it would be that the hypothetical would be, what if India had never been colonized? If no European power had dared to try and impose its, its will by force of arms, what would have happened? And there, the historical trend that was interrupted by the British was um, essentially the growing expansion of the Maratha Empire. The Marathas had spread as far south as Tanjavur. As you know, Sambar was invented in Tanjavur because the Maratha uh, ruler there, Sambhaji, was missing his dal. And so they had to invent something that would please his palate. And they actually, therefore, uh, created using ingredients that didn't exist in Maharashtra, like like tamarind and <coughs> the local dals and spices, they created sambar and named it for sambhaji. So that's, that's why we have sambar in South India, is because of the Marathas ruling us in Tanjavur. And they reached as far as Delhi, where the Mughal emperor was little more than a, a hostage of the Marathas. And though he ruled in name as Mughal emperor, and firmans were issued under his seal, it was the Marathas who were telling him what to do. They went as far east as Calcutta, where they were only stopped by the Maratha ditch dug by the British, and of course the West was already theirs. So despite the major setback at the third battle of Panipat in 1761, when Amit Shah Abdali defeated the Marathas, Abdali had no desire to stay and rule India. He conquered them, killed a few people, looted a lot, stole every precious stone he could lay his hands on, and went back to Afghanistan. If after that any Indian power had to consolidate, it would have been the Marathas. And if I were to look at world history and the history of comparable nations, you would have seen the Marathas controlling the whole subcontinent. It would have initially been a very militarized rule, but in order to rule such a large country, they would have had decentralized sort of mini Peshwas around the place. Like Sambhaji in Tanjavur, there would have been people in 2025 parts of the country owing allegiance to a central sort of Maratha prime minister who in turn would be giving orders to the Mughal emperor in whose name everything would be done. Rather like the Japanese shogunate, you'd have had a situation where you have a symbolic monarch who's, who's essentially a constitutional monarch in the sense that he would have no real power. You'd have a strongly militarized system underneath it, the Marathas playing the roles of the shoguns. And then inevitably, as happened everywhere in the world, including Japan, increasing democratization would come. By the 19th century, this rich and prosperous and strong, because militarily strong country, would be importing rail lines, would be importing factories, and you would have had um, India not divided, but as I say, with a Muslim constitutional monarch and, uh, and, and a Hindu Maratha empire beneath it. There would have been much more syncretism throughout the society. People of all faiths would have worked together. Shivaji, the great Maratha king, famously said to his soldiers that if you ever, after a battle, come across a Quran, you will treat it with respect until you can find a Muslim to give it to. That was his order to his troops. And that kind of situation would have developed uh, throughout the country. And I think India would have been a great constitutional democracy um, uh, on the sort of Japanese model, if you like, by the middle of the 20th century. So that's my counterfactual hypothetical. Maybe it wouldn't have happened, but uh, we know it didn't happen because instead we got the era of darkness. Thank you all very much. Yeah. And have a wonderful festival. You've got four great days ahead.